Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to David Del Rio about the comedy series Maggie dropping on Hulu July 6th. Thank you so much for your time, man. It's good to see you. PD Beats, PD Beats, no. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, man. It's so great to chat with you. Oh, man, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, absolutely. I mean, who doesn't like a fun comedy, right? <laughs> like, 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 yeah, man. It's, but, you know, comedy that has a kind of a unique kind of setting and unique characters and everything. So what's the mindset dropping where you find out there's a psychic component and everything <laughs> where it's not just kind of your typical like kind of family sitcom, you know what I mean? Well, well, you said it, right? Yep. So there's this there's this absolute uh, essence of magic that's in this rom-com formula, you know? And any project that I'm grateful enough to be a part of and, and, and people uh, trust me to tell a character story, you know, the thing that really ignites me in, in any of my work is basically, are we doing something that's never been done before? Now, yep. that's kind of like a tall order, almost an impossible order, but I try to find the things in each project that kind of make something special and the sort of whimsical idea that if your friend, uh, a new friend or a best friend can't actually say, uh, tell your future, how is that? How is that uh, relationship? You know, how is the relationship with Maggie's parents? You know, what did they have to deal with when she was a little girl? And then, you know, uh, dealing with uh, dating, dealing with, you know, friendship. And, and this show really uh, dives deep into the what if of that in a very sweet rom com formula way that you really laugh and then you kind of really question of going, man, that would actually really really be cool and I'm and I'm and I was very interested in what was going on in the lives of these characters surrounding Maggie and that was something that was really really uh fun to play and that was kind of the intent of all the creatives as well as the actors are we telling the story that that you know we can just after the first uh episode we can get past that notion that she can tell the future because the idea is that where we have a relationship. So yep. let's just get past it. And who are you as a person first without that gift? And that was one of the things that we really, really tried to convey in our in our show. I know absolutely. It's gonna be a really fun summer release. Like I mean it's it's perfect. Uh, you know what I, mean? I, I really appreciate it. I, I really hope so, you know, and, and the, the best you can really do is do the best work you can yep. and and really hope that there's an audience out there. And I think there is. I think I think this show's got muscle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great time for streaming services, the content and everything. Great time for Hulu right now. Like Hulu, Hulu is rocking right now, David. What's it like to kind of be part of a show right now where Hulu is doing a lot of amazing things, pumping out a lot of amazing content right now? You know, what I can say about being part of a Hulu show is, you know, it's funny. You can say that it's a dream, but stream streamers are so new. <laughs> Do you ever dream to really be on this streamer? However... <laughs> However, uh, uh, being part of the Hulu family is something very special to me, especially uh, my wife and I are avid watchers of a lot of Hulu programming and, yep. and to be part of a uh, organization that really is out there to tell stories, yep. stories that people have never seen before, that, that's their venture. And to be part of that Rolodex in their venture is something that I'm very honored to be a part of. You have worked on a lot of different genres, a lot of different kind of con like a lot of content, a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows. Is the mindset different depending on different projects in terms of you know preparation and getting involved with the project, or is it all storytelling in your books? Okay, talk about acting for a second, huh? Let's just talk about acting for a second, right? <laughs> I know. I love that question. I love that question only because I can only uh, answer uh, project by project. You know, yeah. for me, it's it's one of those things that what is necessary for this character for me to investigate to tell the story. You know, and and I I, I try not to find what I relate to. I, I know a lot of people kind of go, "What do I relate to to the character?" But I'm playing a character, right? So I try to find something that I don't know about, and then I really really uh, uh, dive in. And I think what this preparation was is that it was just ready to tell a story to honor the rom-com tropes because we have a lot of episodes that we're, you know, my character and uh, Rebecca's character are really obsessed with this very well-known rom-com movie. And, and it's a mirror in yeah. terms of 
foundation into our show, but then how do we enhance it? And 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 my interest and and my process with this was, you know, Ben's a flawed character. He's charming and he and he's sarcastic, but what's under there? That and what he what he's what is he trying to hide there? And 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 I love playing flawed characters. So I I, I try to get to uh, this one was a lot more homework based than it was uh, doing things like I, I I've been in movies where I had to lose weight or I had to go or I went to the school that my characters uh, went to. Uh, there were there were uh, things that I went straight to an acting coach and really dove into the homework. This one was a little bit more of a, a script analysis and really trying to see how to make something in the rom-com formula just really enhanced and and sort of modern and and that's what i really concentrated on absolutely and you know you you say acting but in, at the end of the day you know david del rio is a storyteller that's what you do yeah. basically yeah. is it safe yeah. to say that one of the things that kind of stands out excites you these days about storytelling david is the fact that many stories that weren't necessarily told before are finally being able to get told I mean, uh, it's it's true, right? Yeah. I mean, if you go back all the way to the Hollywood system, right? The Hollywood system was all about we're you're going to do movies for us under our contract. So it doesn't even really matter what the content or what the content is of that. You're under our contract, therefore you're going to be doing our movie. Who cares, right? Yeah. And it's just so crazy that Clark Gable won an Academy Award for one of those movies that he did not want to be in, and 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 uh, and. And basically, he was contractually obligated to do that movie. Then, since then, we had actors going on saying, we want to do our own stuff, and we want to do it our way. And yet, even then, they had the eyes of the producer saying what works and what doesn't. And I think that stories now change with the times. Not only change, but grow with the times. And I think that the stories that are being told now more than ever are really representing absolutely everybody yeah. and 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 that's something that I'm, I'm i'm so grateful to be an actor in this time in uh hollywood storytelling it's so amazing as well my one of my favorite things and you know we were talking before you started you're very interested in traveling and everything is the global yeah. kind of con the global ability of content these days is my favorite thing about it because people ask me what's your favorite thing about storytelling and acting and all that stuff too but it's like storytellers like yourself, your stuff instantly is like available globally, which is like my favorite thing. Is it not blow your mind though sometimes the access of a lot of content? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It blows my mind. Uh, it's so much so that I have an OCD system of what, I, I'm a cinephile, right? So uh, for me, uh, an old movie, if I've never seen it, it's a new movie to me. It's as new as Doctor Strange <laughs> and Multiverse, right? And so, and so for me, it's one of those things that I have to come up with a system for my OCD to figure out what I'm going to watch next because the menu is just so large out there. And then the other thing that you were saying was, is that th there are stories, the reason why stories are global is because, and I don't know why people are continuing to be shocked by this, but like, we are all humans on this earth. And when we realize and open our eyes and open our ears to see what uh, stories are coming out of Asia, Greece, Latin America, you know, it's, it's not that much of a shocker that we're all part of the same world and our stories relate. And that's one of the things that continue to shock us. It shouldn't, but it does. Oh, absolutely. When you did, when I did my intro, you go like PD Beats, I was surprised you weren't going to do like, the air drumming in the background. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what they, you know what I usually do is like, all right, BB, it's bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Has it kind of hit you, though, that a lot of content that you have done in the past, and it's interesting what you say about the cinephile stuff, I mean, the access and, like, the memes and the gifts and the vi TikTok videos, like, there's not a lot of shelf life for a lot of content you did, like, a while ago, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and grateful for it, right? Yeah. I mean... The idea that people can continue to revisit and 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 there's many life beyond the project and there's many life beyond your time on set right and that's one of those things that you got to remember as an actor that is so much bigger than you yeah. right the project is so much bigger right and one of my favorite quotes was from dame judy dents dench is to you know take your work seriously and not yourself and that really opens 
the mindset a little bit in terms of how you approach your work, because the work one way or another is going to live on. You know, the show that I was in before called Baker and the Beauty, you know, that was a underground hit. And to leave a show in the way that it was left, meaning that it had a lot of loyal fans and having the reputation of this show should come back. That's the way you want to leave a show. Yeah. And, really excited to see the the the, you know the the audience that loved baker to to watch this show as well because they're going to see a completely different david and 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 i'm very excited to to show them a a different part of myself absolutely when they get a chance to watch maggie on hulu july 6th what are you hoping they get out of it takeaway wise specifically oh i i i hope they take away that they want to see more and yeah. I know that sounds a little campaigny, but I'm going to say that anyway because what the producers and the writers have done, I watched it and I was such I was such an audience member right there. I was so enthralled with the story of, you know, can you live in the present if you can see the future? What is it? Questions. When does it start kind of hitting you though? that a thing you worked on like finally comes out. I mean, there's the obvious doing press like this, you got the junkets coming up and everything, but like, do you, does it start hitting you when you start talking to teams about they're talking about, you know, post production's almost done. Like when does it officially hit you that something you worked on is finally going to get out there to the masses? This is when I watch it. I mean, yeah. like when I, I get sent the screeners, you know, when I sent, when I get sent screeners and watch stuff uh, before it gets released, I kind of just forget about it yeah. and really concentrate on the next thing, you know, and, and my wife and I have a production company. So we've got our plate completely full, thankfully. So, and we've getting people uh, who really, really want to work with us in the content that we're presenting that really, it, it, what really hits me. And, and I'll tell you this too. Another answer to that is, it hits me when I rap, basically. That yeah. it's all over, right? That my that my heart and my head and my body is finally at rest from the character of Ben. Hopefully, it'll come back, but it finally takes a rest, and that's when I kind of uh, uh, sort of kind of take a look back and say, okay. Uh, what's next, basically. Oh, absolutely. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, it was a pretty cool thing. I um, I wrapped a short horror movie that I co-wrote and produced, actually. Congratulations, was, honey. It was, it actually, it's kind of what you said, what you just said about rap, what you just said about rap, like rapping and everything. Yeah, yeah. The, it felt like outer body when you got, like, like when you're actually like, wow, like I'm making a project. Like it felt surreal a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's surreal. It's surreal, right? Where where you ask yourself, will the audience pick up what you're putting down? Yeah. And, and but then what's so great about our industry is the idea that you, we will never know the experiences of individuals who are watching uh, our show or our short or our film. It's completely up to them. And our jobs as storytellers is to present a slice of life, whether it be fantastical or not, to get a relationship going of, do you relate to this? If you do, then basically this is for you. You know, how many times have we seen people watch Gone Girl and they didn't know if it was a comedy or a drama? It yeah. depends on how you look at it. It depends on how you watch it, right? And, 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 and it's nice to kind of be in an industry in that way. When you open a Coke can, you know what you're going to taste. And if you don't taste that, <laughs> something's wrong, right? So that's the same thing. It's not the same thing with our industry, right? There's something for everybody depending on how you watch it. And you can, and you can relax in that, in that notion. But we're in like an era, like with music too, right? We're in like this like genre bending era where people aren't even doing it like on purpose not waking up in the morning and they're like hey like david i want to make a horror comedy you know what i mean i feel like it just kind of happens you know what i mean why is that do you think is it just we're just naturally just not limiting ourselves and we're just writing scripts and going with it type thing i think that's 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 a really great question i think the only thing that comes from things being purposeful is the story that you want to tell and how you want it you know Uh, and we are all we are admired by those that influence us of how we want to do things, right? Yep. And we make the decision to enhance it or honor it or give it an homage or give our own little spin to it or be in an exercise of it, of how did Scorsese do that? Let me implement that basically in my work. Um, when people have a, uh, uh, a foresight of doing something to be successful at it, 
that's kind of when things get a little bit rocky. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where the, where the foresight is, listen, what I want to do is have people see my story, hate it, like it, but see it. That's yeah. where I you know what I mean? And, and whatever that definition of success is for you, then, 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 then that's what it is. But when I jump in, I've directed two features uh, thus far. And, and I always tell my crew and cast, let's go back and tap into our 14 year old self who just loves to do it just to do it. Yeah. And you, I, I do things because I love doing it. Right? Yep. I, I, I do this work and I like producing, I like writing, I like directing because I just love doing it, right? Yep. And doing it right or wrong, that's up to the audience, really. Absolutely. David, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turb. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for coming on Pop Turb to chat about Maggie on Hulu. It was great chatting with you. <laughs> of course, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So yeah, July 6th on Hulu, they can check that out. And where can people follow you on social media to keep updated with everything? Instagram? Um, yeah, just Instagram at David Del Rio. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turner of YouTube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Till next time, this is David Del Rio, who you can catch in Maggie, streaming on Hulu July 6th. And Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.